All right, so I am doing for an example a pot holder. And as you can see, I've made two base squares and I've connected them with one connecting square. Now, for this, I decided to do a couple of things differently. So, um, this is out of worsted weight acrylic yarn. These squares themselves are about the same uh, size. In order to make them the same size, I cast on 27 stitches, 13 center stitch, 13. And the rest of the patterns were about the same. I'm sorry it's blowing out so much. Let me see if I can, okay. And the rest of the process was the same. The other thing that I did is I picked here colors that are all in the same hue. Now, for my border, instead of doing black, I did like a beigey tan. So what I'm going to make here is a trivet or a pot holder, and my next step is to do my sides um, like you've seen in the video before. So here we go. Okay, so on this sample I've now completed two base squares, I've done one connecting square, and I've done two squaring off sides, one left hand side and one right hand side. Um, one thing to note about this as a design difference is that in my blanket, my squaring off squares are in the colors, but in this one, I decided to do them the same as my lining, which again is not black, it's this tan. So next up, I'm gonna do two more connecting squares in here. So here I am, I did two base squares, a connecting square, my two squaring off squares, and then two more of the just, you know, main squares. Now, if you're doing a blanket, it's probably gonna look different than this, right? It's gonna be wider or longer or whatever, but at the end of the day, you're gonna end up with a very similar shape, okay? So you're gonna have the sides coming up, your squares, and the top will have these divots, and the bottom will have these divots. As an example, here's a large chunk of my blanket, okay, and you can see that there's all these divots across the bottom, and there's some of them across the top, right? I'm still building my blanket, but it's basically the same construction. This is just fewer squares. So the next step is we're going to put essentially little triangles in here and in here, the same way that we did on the sides. So here we go. So your first step is going to be to pick up stitches like you normally do right in here, okay? So for the 49 stitch version, you'll pick up 24, center stitch, 24. I'm gonna do different numbers because I'm doing a, a 27 stitch version, but I'll see you once I've done that. So here I am. I have my appropriate number of stitches picked up, and your first row is going to be just like usual. You're going to turn it around and knit as usual. So you're going to slip purlwise, oops, slip purlwise with the yarn in front, put the yarn to the back, and then knit all the way across, except when you get to the last two stitches, you're going to switch it up. Okay, so I'm approaching the end of this first row, and normally I would knit this last stitch through the back loop, but instead I'm just going to knit two together, right? So you've completed that first knit row after you pick things up. You're going to turn it around, and you're going to start the next row just like you normally do, where you slip one as if to purl with the yarn in front, bring the yarn to the back. Now, normally, this is where you would knit straight up to the center and do your center double decrease, which you will still do, but since you knit two together at the end over here, you're going to have one fewer stitches on this side. So normally, if you're doing the 49 stitch version, you would knit 23 stitches, or slip one and knit 22, so have 23 total and then do your center double decrease. This one, you would slip one and knit 21, 
or have 22 total and do your center, center double decrease. And the reason for that is because you've already decreased by one over here and you still want to keep it even. So, so I'm going to go ahead and do my center double decrease and several people have asked for um, clarification on that. So these are my three stitches, okay? And by the way, it is a center double decrease, not a center triple decrease. I know I'm, I screwed that up on one of my videos. So you're going to stick your needle in as if you're going to knit two together, okay? Eh, of course, now that I'm doing it, you can't see it. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking like I'm going to knit two together, but I'm not actually going to knit it, so I'm not going to bring my yarn over there. I'm just going to slide them off the needle. Then you go to the next stitch, you actually knit the next stitch, and then, let's see if I can get this to focus, you pick up those two stitches that you slipped, and you just pull them, slip them, over the stitch that you actually knit. That's how you do your decrease. So then you're gonna knit, plain knit, all the way to the end, Except, just like on the last row, instead of doing your knit through the back loop at the end, you're just going to knit two together. And you're going to continue in that fashion, um, where at the end, you, instead of knitting through the back loop, you knit two together. So, one of the interesting things here is that sometimes you're going to have more stitches on this side than you do on that one. So just before you start a right side row, count, and you should have the same number of stitches on each side. After you finish a right side row, you will have one more stitch on the right than you do on the left, and that's before you turn it around, okay? So when you're facing the right side, before you knit across, it's even. After you knit across, there's one more on the right than on the left. So I'm getting near the end, and as you can see, it's sort of flattening out across the top. So right now I have two stitches on either side of my center stitch. Um, one thing to note is I said to count right before you started your right side row, and I highly advise that because often I will discover that I automatically knit through the back loop instead of knitting two together. So I'm going to slip as if to knit or as if to purl, excuse me, my yarn in front, put the yarn in the back, go straight into my center double decrease, and then because I don't have two over here to knit together, this time I will, for the last stitch, knit through the back loop. So now I'm on those last three stitches, and normally I would turn the work around, slip, purl, knit, and then go back. But since we don't want a pointy end, what I'm going to do is turn the work around and just slip all three of them. I'm not knitting anything. Goodness, my yarn and my needles are getting all tangled. Okay. So now I've got them ready to go. Now my yarn is coming out of the left side, but I am going to knit from the right. And I'm just going to do one of my, goodness, I'm so sorry, one of my center double decreases. So I'm not doing that purl row in between. And this is what you end up with. So cut your yarn and pull it through. So after you cut your yarn and pull it through, you will have a bit of a point right here. All you have to do is sort of pull it to the sides and it flattens itself out. Okay. So that's what I did across the top here. Now you may be wondering, what do I do down here? Well, as it turns out, when you did your long tail cast on and you did it over two needles, it made a very, very loose cast on. And as you can see, you basically have stitches here to pick up. So you're actually going to do exactly the same thing, except instead of picking up 
into your slip stitches across the edge, you're gonna pick up into your cast on stitches. So you'll do exactly the same thing. And I'll meet you back here after I've done that. All right, so here I am. I've completed two base squares, one connecting square, two bodies, or two squaring off sides, two body squares, and now I've done a top and a bottom. Now, the next step, of course, is if you, if this were a blanket, these sides would be much longer, right? Because you'd have many, many, many base squares and so many, many rows, many columns. However, since I just did a little one, it actually makes this nice circle shape. If you were making a blanket, you might want to, out of these corners, square off like this. So that's what I'm going to show you next. What you'll do is, let's say you're working on this corner, is you'll pick up the appropriate number of stitches along here. So in this case, um, if it, well, if you were doing a 49 stitch square, this would be 24 stitches. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back. So in my case, I picked up 14 stitches, but again, if you were doing a 49 stitch square, you would wanna pick up 24. So basically, the rest of this triangle is going to be exactly the same as what you did here, except without the center decreases. So you'll start by slipping, as if to purl with yarn in front, bring your yarn to the back, and you'll knit across until you get to the very end, at which point you will knit two together, like so. Okay, then you turn, and you're gonna do exactly the same thing all the way until the end. Slip as if to purl with yarn in front, put the yarn in the back, knit all the way across until you get to the end, at which point you will knit two together. And then you're just gonna keep turning and repeating until you get to the end. So now here I am at the end. At this point I only have three stitches left. So you're just gonna slip one as if to purl with yarn in front, do your knit two together, turn it around, and on this last one, you're just gonna knit two together. Cut the yarn and pull it through. All right, so now, you've got this tiny little corner up here. What you would do is then just repeat in the other four corners of your blanket. I am actually not going to do the other three corners because I'm going to rip this out and I'm going to make this project round. But if you were to square off your blanket, that's what you would do. All right, thank you, bye.